Welcome to the Own It Paracast, the place to be when you get serious about making big changes and accelerating growth in your life and in your relationships. Finally create the life you've always wanted, living life on your own terms. Learn how to take your fear and turn it into powerful choices that will create sustained change. Now your host, Mary Baker. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Own It Powercast, the place to come to get what you need to move yourself forward. Hey, it's Mary Baker and welcome to episode 172. We need to feel fulfilled and find purpose. Well, welcome to a brand new month, which is going to be all about finding fulfillment and a sense of purpose in our lives. What do I mean by fulfillment? There is a quote by Dr. Barber. It says, fulfillment is the process of living a valued life where one pursues things that matter to them or that they are passionate about, end quote. So this month, we're going to be focusing mainly on using your gifts, finding and getting into your passions to find fulfillment. Why do I think fulfillment is so important? Well, I think after years of doing therapy and coaching with folks around anxiety, self-esteem, anger issues, depression, all the above. One of the biggest things that I have found, and the research actually backs this up, is that when people did enough healing work, and whether they were on the continuum from god-awful trauma to maybe some benign stuff and everyone in between, that finding and utilizing a sense of purpose in their life was the game changer. That was the difference between people who thrived rather than just surviving what happened to them. Now, when I first heard this research in a training some years ago, I about fell off my chair because I had always personally believed that. And that was just because of my own journey around it but also from sitting with folks who said the same thing to me. There's a big cost to not pursuing this. And just like the symptoms I mentioned, depression, anxiety, self-esteem issues, and worse, you can be functioning, but you're going to have a low level of constant feelings of like restlessness, boredom, anger, not feeling great. A lot of other focus that we talk a lot about here on the show, probably to avoid ourselves in the ways we have not been true to us. Anxiety, never feeling settled or satisfied. When I sit with people who describe feeling these ways, after a while, we figure it out that a lot of the core issue even underneath all the trauma and all the stuff that happened to them, was wasting the natural skills that they had of not pursuing things that really mattered to them, things that they are still passionate about. And even worse, never finding out what their life could have been if they had pursued those things. So in essence, of course, these folks had lower self-confidence and self-esteem, because they were trying to be someone and something that they weren't. And maybe they could do okay and do well at certain things, but they were not happy. They kept trying to put that square peg in that round hole. Maybe they kept trying things and became frustrated that they weren't as successful as they thought they could be. But it's because they weren't in touch with their authentic self and their true gifts. And they're more reserved and controlled and just not really feeling free and authentic and in the moment. I think the biggest cost though, and there's research to back this up too, of interviews with people who are elderly, the regret, the living with the regret later in your life, which is why when some people have a life altering experience as well, like a layoff, a divorce, a loss of a loved one, maybe a health scare, They often reevaluate what really matters to them, and they've come face to face with the reality that life is very short and very precious, and time blows by faster the older we get. So there are costs to subverting what we really think and feel and want to be. 
and who we really are. Conversely, some of the benefits of being the real you and risking putting the real you out there, because guys, that's why people don't do it. Something happened along the way or a bunch of somethings happened along the way to talk you out of perhaps pursuing maybe that singing career, maybe the art school, maybe going out on your own and being an entrepreneur, maybe doing something crazy and philanthropic, maybe creating something out there in the world that isn't there yet. And so sadly, maybe you didn't pursue things or you started to pursue and you became easily frustrated or people held you back. Or perhaps they encouraged you to play it safe, go get a business degree, go get a good corporate job, do IT, do engineering, which are great jobs, if that's what you love. But maybe just because you can do those things, quote unquote, may not be the best place for you to use all your gifts and everything that you're passionate about. So what is the opposite of going against who you are? Well, it's feeling more grounded and confident. Obviously, happier, more energized. You feel like you have something to contribute to society, to your community, maybe to the universe, to the world at large, whatever your belief system is, is how you're going to couch that one. It gives you goals to move towards and accomplish and feel really good about. And you feel more alive because you aren't fighting yourself anymore. You are going with the flow. You are allowing your natural talents to come forth. You're allowing them to grow and to flourish and to see where they take you. There is a quote that a client said to me years ago, and it said, your gift will always make a way for you, Mary, is what she said. I really do believe that. And we see story after story after story of, I guess, famous people or the ones we all know more about, of how that happened for them. So part of what we're going to talk about this month is identification first, knowing what your gifts are. We're going to talk about going back and thinking about what you love to do as a child, just in your play, like what you really love to do. Others notice that and remember what you did. So I have clients often, if it's, you know, possible and safe to do so, go ask your sister, go ask your mom, go ask your uncle what do they remember about you when you were little? Like, what were you usually doing? Maybe you had a natural talent for like singing or teaching or writing, speaking, dancing, creating, math, leading, encouraging, building. You know, what were you naturally drawn to over the years? What are you passionate about just because? without even thinking about it, you just know that you're passionate about things. And you naturally want to do it and you have interest in it. And time flies when you're either learning about it or doing it or thinking about doing it and you're energized. You are not drained. You're not dreading how long this is going to take. Time actually flies by because you're so in the moment we are going to spend some time this month exploring ways to find your talents and your passions. Now, I do believe that these do tie into our sense of purpose. They're not the whole answer. They're a big piece, though. So we're going to talk this month about why having a sense of purpose is really important and that Finding this is a desire that I have seen, and I would say every client I've ever worked with who did a lot of good work, either as a counselor or a coach, because after they've done some deep work around healing old wounds, setting boundaries, getting rid of shame, coming into more self-love and self-acceptance, they want more because they've been uncovering and remembering and accepting and even liking their authentic self. And a big part of their authentic self is what they're good at and what they love and what they care about and why they're here. 
It's almost as if that sense of purpose is one of the final puzzle pieces that my clients grapple with, finding and where to put it. Maybe even correlating, I think, to Maslow's needs scale, which you guys know I love. Because think about the scale. Security is foundational at the bottom, right? Well, when we do healing work and when we validate what happened to us and what didn't happen for us, and we're not crazy, and what we feel and think and need is valid, we start trusting ourselves more like you and I talk about often here on the show. We feel more secure within ourselves. We make more sense. Once we own what we're passionate about and what we're talented around and what we were naturally drawn to and what we have experienced, What I am passionate about is because what I've walked through and watched others walk through. So that really ties into my sense of purpose. So then going up Maslow's scale, feeling greater self-esteem and belongingness, because when we use our gifts, it's so funny, we find ways to use them often to help others and to be a part of something, some kind of community that that entails or is a part of. Others are interested in our interests and what we're good at. We draw people to us naturally. Do you ever notice how that happens? So there's that sense of belongingness and self-esteem, which are so crucial to A, mental health, and B, wanting to get out of bed in the morning, feeling energized, feeling fulfilled and happier with our life. And of course, you know, self-actualization sits at the top of Maslow's triangle. There's that desire to be a better person. There's that need almost that my clients talk about to have meaning and purpose in their life. They don't want their life to feel shallow. They don't want it to feel numb. They don't want it to feel like it's just based on things or achievements or status or things that they find more shallow, I guess. They want deeper and they want more meaningful and they want a lot more substance, not only in their life, but also it extends to their experiences and their relationships. So it's a very holistic view here. So I just want you to think about this month as we talk about your sense of passion around things and your sense of purpose and your gifts, and who you are, and where you are in your life. Every puzzle piece matters. So this month, we're going to talk about what special things do you think you contribute, and how do they perhaps benefit others, and have you even thought about how they might benefit others? You know, like, there's more subtle gifts, like maybe you're so good at gathering people together that can help each other. Maybe you're great at putting on events or throwing parties or cooking or catering or gardening. Maybe you're just the best gift giver in the world and you're just a great buyer of gifts and you really help people feel special and loved by what you choose for them. Maybe you're a great listener. Maybe you're an awesome leader and don't even know it yet. And then things that you might be passionate about maybe social justice, maybe creativity, maybe the environment, maybe legal rights, maybe beautification of your community, maybe community itself, maybe it's for the elderly, maybe your passion around kids, passionate about securing medical care for those who are underserved. I mean, the list is endless. It's what you care about and what you're passionate about. There could be several things that you are really amped about and excited about. And I just kind of want you to think of if you put them all in a collage in your head, they probably would all kind of fit together like we've talked about before. Every once in a while, you'll get an outlier. But usually the things connect in obvious or maybe not so obvious ways that help us see that we are more congruent than we realize. For example, if someone is creative, they may think, oh, well, I don't paint, or I can't draw a straight line, Mary, or 
and they limit themselves. And I, I tell them, well, what about your cooking? What about those cakes that you make that are amazing and everyone's asking you to make one? Or what about your decorating skills? Or what about your landscaping that you just come by naturally? Creativity takes a million different forms and it's what feels creative to you and brings you joy. And at the end of the month, we're going to talk to someone who really helps us to think about our uniqueness when it comes to identifying our gifts and our passions and how you're not like everyone else. And we're really glad you're not because you do it differently than anyone else does. You may do the very same things, but we need you. It's a big world and you're needed in certain areas to do those particular things. There are a lot of beliefs wrapped in this work, and that's what we're going to talk about this month as well. What have you come to believe about yourself? How did others help you? And I say that sarcastically in a way, and maybe in good ways in another, help you form beliefs about yourself, about what you're capable of, about what matters to you, and should it matter to you? You know, owning it, this whole podcast is about owning who you really, truly are. And your beliefs are a big part of that. This month, I want you to take some time and think about, do you know who you really are? And if you do, but you've been hiding them, what do you want to do about that? So I want to take a few moments right now to take some time to get clear about where you are right now today around all of this. For those of you who are not familiar, if you're walking, if you're driving, if you're jogging, if you're busy, and you can't write anything down, that's totally fine. Just listen for and pay attention to what comes up for you. And if you subscribe to the newsletter, you're going to get this in written form anyway today as the bonus download. So you can look at it later too. All right, you ready? So I'm going to pose a question or a statement, and I just want you to listen and see what comes up immediately, like your first thoughts before you even think about it. And they could be positive, negative, indifferent, and all the above. And it's okay. Just accept what immediately comes as your truth. All right. Number one. If I were to look at how fulfilled I am right now in my life, if I were to look at how fulfilled I am right now in my life, Number two, in the past, when I took a risk and showed my gift to others, in the past, when I took a risk and showed my gift to others, number three, some of the things I'm naturally interested in are Some of the things I'm naturally interested in are And number four I realize I feel most alive and present when I am I realize I feel most alive and present when I am. Okay, so notice what came up for you as you heard these questions or statements. Think about what has stayed with you the most and why that might make sense. 
Like I believe that when something really resonates and won't go away, it often means that it's time. It's time to take a look at that thing because we're ready to uncover what it means for our life. And I think we're ready to embrace it or do the work to honor it. So today we began talking about how the focus this month will be all about discovering or maybe rediscovering our talents and passions and why it matters for us to really own them and I think utilize them in order to feel confident and fulfilled, to feel happy. And we're gonna talk about how to go about this process. Being authentic and bravely putting ourselves out there increases our self-confidence. I think it helps us to feel like we belong and I think to have more substance and meaning in our lives. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope this episode got you thinking at least a little bit about how much you honor your authentic self and all the wonderful gifts that you have. Be sure to check the show notes at ownitpowercast.com and sign up for the newsletter if you don't already have it. So you can get that bonus download from today's episode. All right, so pay it forward, keep focusing on you, and I'll see you next time. We hope you took away some useful insights and tools you can begin using right away. If you did, please leave a positive review and share on your social media. Because could you imagine if everyone in your life really got it together? Remember, own it now, so you can really own it later.